Alrighty, now we're live. <clears throat> Feels like it's been forever. Jeez. Okay, I think we're good. My webcam's working. Restream is working. Here's my stream notes. This is what we're doing today. Oof. Now we're live on freaking LinkedIn. Ugh. Everything's great. Gosh dang it. And now we're over here. Yeah. Alright, we got everything working. <coughs> so. Oh, it feels like it's been forever. It's only been a week, like it always is, because I do it every weekend. But, um, assuming everybody can hear me, and we're going well, please hit me with any problems. Um, today we're talking about, basically, <laughs> me screwing up. So, in, uh, la the, over this past like week, I've been promoting a little bit online, um, <clears throat> mostly on LinkedIn, uh, about how I wanted to build a aggregation tool for something called Popsburg. Yay, very, very cute. Um, I live in Pittsburgh. It's Popsburg because we were trying to create, me and my friend Dan, um, to preface it was that, me and my friend Dan were trying to make um, an aggregator for dog activity in Pittsburgh, right? <clears throat> and that's pretty quickly, we hung out all of, like, uh, all of yesterday. Hey, Kenneth, how's it going? Um, we hung out all of yesterday for like five hours straight uh, and started at like 12.30 and then and went until like uh, like 5.30 or 6. Um, no, it was like 5, 5.30. But uh, we spent a ton of time on this and basically we got nowhere. And the reason is because we both overestimated the, or underestimated the, the difficulty of um, pulling information from live sources, right? So the goal, just to kind of discuss... Um, what the initial build was, right? And then I'll go into why we screwed up and how we messed up. Um, the, the initial problem was Pupsburg, yay. Uh, me and my friend Eileen were both having a lot of trouble. Uh, like, we, we would always see on Facebook and, and other places how we missed these awesome dog events. And I love corgis, and corgis are racing, corgis are super cute. And they were there was, like, a corgi event hosted at my university, and I didn't know about it. There was a corgi event hosted at a nearby university or, like, at a, at a nearby dog park, and I didn't know about it. And I wanted to know about these dog things that were going on, right? Because I love dogs. I don't have a dog of my own, at least not in Pittsburgh. My mom has a dog. But I, I want to, as, as a human that gets stressed sometimes, it's enjoyable to cuddle a pooch, right? So we wanted to like make a resource for people to subscribe to, to, to log onto a website to see where all the dog events in Pittsburgh were happening, right? Just an aggregator. We just pull from a bunch of different sources and jam it into one newsletter. And uh, I talked to Dan about that. Dan is my friend. Dan is a super coder, ridiculous son of a gun genius. He can code whatever he wants. Um, but he was interested. He also likes pooches. And so we decided to hang out and just see if we could build something for fun um, one uh, one weekend, right? So that was yesterday. And I was hyping it up, like, oh, I'm going to build this thing. It's going to be great. We're going to have something. And the goal was to make it completely automated. So we didn't have to do any work. It would just be an automated newsletter that would send out every week with a compilation of, of, of dog events and then another, uh, like a website where we could just kind of compile that feed so you could go and log on to the website if you didn't read the newsletter to see if there are regular updates about pooch events in town. But it was just a compiler of other things that were going on um, so that you could get all the information in one place for pooch events in Pittsburgh, right? So a local, uh, the, the general topic that I think this works with is it's a local um, aggregator for uh, topic-specific specific information, right? So the same problem applies to uh, like millions of different kind of business topics, right? Like uh, millions of different kind of mini businesses. You could make uh, you could make infinity of these. Um, we chose dogs and we chose Pittsburgh. You could choose Washington D.C. and political events. You could choose like Portland, uh, Portland freaking uh, Portland, Maine, and and boating events. Like it 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 could be whatever, right? But it's just it's localized, um, topic specific, uh, event aggregation, right? So, there's a ton of different things you could build out of this. But we decided to do pooches. Yay. And it didn't work yet. So, we're not giving it up on it, but it was just going to take a lot longer than we thought it was. Uh, and I'm going to go over the reasons why. Uh, so, that's the concept of Pup City, or Pupsburg, or whatever you want to call it. Very cute, very fun, very wholesome. Um, and we way overestimated it. Because we, we didn't get nothing done. We learned a ton about what needs to like happen. Um, but it's... Definitely going to take us longer than we initially expected, right? Um, so, by the way, is everything going good? I feel like I'm missing something. Everything going here? Are there any issues? I don't think there's any issues. I think everything's fine, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
think everything's okay. Um, okay, cool. So, <clears throat> reasons we got nothing done. Um, basically, and is this the next thing on the agenda? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, backing up a little bit, Dan was interested just because it's like a little coding kind of effort, right? Like it's a, he was essentially going to try to pull different sources. It was going to be like a web scraper. We're going to use a web scraper. We were going to use like an automation tool that, that reruns a piece of code every like week or so. So it pulls information from different sources. Yeah. Poochberg sounds cool. Um, he had no trouble with any of that. He's done tons of web scrapers before. He's done tons of different things. Uh, the tech was not the issue. It is just like, like this guy, you could have one of the most like, powerful stunning encoders like dan is amazing is the point dan is awesome and and there was no like we we didn't have trouble on the technical side because of uh, limitations in his ability he could do whatever he wants um i'm typically against code and so we found a couple of different methods that i'll go over for no coding this um and there is still a method that i'm probably going to use to no code it just to just to kind of prototype this and i'll, I'll talk about that um actually here yeah uh, let me make sure I got this. We rest myself, got nothing done. Ourselves. Ourselves. Um, spread the blame. <laughs> um, and then ways to make it actually work. Code. No code. Dope. So, um, <clears throat> the main issue that we ran into were, um, API walls, I think. Uh, I don't know if that's the, specifically the technical term. You can clearly tell that I'm not uh, a tech savvy individual um, when it comes to like writing code. But um, basically, the an API, from my understanding, is just like the accessibility from an outside program perspective. So if I wrote something in like Python on my computer and I said, um, "Hey." go and pull information or go to this website, right? I told the code itself to go to this website and do whatever the heck. Um, certain websites make that really hard because they like to keep things internal. They like don't like to they don't like people going in like me, going in and pulling their stuff out of the, the platform, right? Um, people get <coughs> pissed about that. So for an under understandable reason. Like it, it kind of it kind of uh, negates the, 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 the power of your your, pro, your program or your tool or your platform online. So the three sources that we were going to grab from, um, it was like 5% of the events seemed to be coming from Eventbrite. Um, and I have a little thing about that over here, uh, which is a little event platform online where you can buy tickets and you can host events. And, and it's just a little thing online there to, to get RSVPs. The other one was Meetup. That was about 45% of the traffic, it seemed like. There were pretty regular dog events um, happening there. And uh, the other 50% was from Facebook. As we expect, Facebook events are used for a lot. Um, and uh, we, we knew a lot was going to be coming from there, right? Uh, hold on one second. Um, so 50% from Facebook, 45% from Meetup, and the other 5% from Eventbrite. Eventbrite didn't seem to be big of an issue, right? I was looking at no-code tools, one called Appify, which Dan let me know about, um, where you can essentially just like find code banks um, and find little programs people have written to automate certain things, which is awesome. I'm going to look deeper into Appify. It looks really fun. I hate code. I'm not like I, I'll probably learn some at some point. Dan's probably going to teach me something at some point because like he, but it's and I would love to like learn how to just go on like GitHub and something and just like grab little things of, the, of stuff that people have already built and use them. That's what we tried to do mostly for this thing. and I'll get into that later. Um, but for the most part, um, I like just grabbing things offline and uh, like online and just using them as tools. Right. So Appify looks great. We're going to go over this a little bit later. It looks really fun. But as an example for, for Eventbrite, um, it has a little, uh, you give it the, the freaking HTTP post, uh, and it, it uh, you give it the, like the, the piece of, of Eventbrite that you want it to pull from and essentially just does it regularly, I think, um, which is awesome. It's literally exactly what we wanted. It doesn't, it, it sounds like Eventbrite doesn't really care, right? They don't, it, all their information is public. All their stuff is, is out there. It's existing. Um, they don't have an issue with people pulling, uh, stuff from their site, right? So if I go to Eventbrite, eventbrite.com, I don't have to like log in, right, to see what's happening in Pittsburgh. See, there's all these different events. 
Um, there's all these different events. All of this, I can search things. I can do all this different stuff without. I can search here. Like as an example, I can search dog, and I don't have to sign in. That's fine, which means all of this is open source. Like all of this is open to to programs online. I can have a program go in here and scrape stuff. Super easy. No API wall, right? Low tech. We could probably use Appify. We could probably find some other uh, like Eventbrite scrapers online. Shouldn't be that hard. Yay. Um, that's not where we ran into the issue. And plus, that's only 5% of um, the actual traffic that we wanted, right? We needed more. Um, <clears throat> Meetup is like middle of the road. Uh, it, they have, you can register for uh, an OAuth. I think OAuth is like an automatic authentication um, or original authentication. I'm not sure what it stands for. But it allows um, API applications to securely act on a user's behalf. That means if I have a program and I sign up and register and tell Meetup what I'm going to be using their API access for, they and they like it and they're okay with it, they'll let me, right? So they so we, and they also give you like a, a set of code banks and a set of things to, to make it easy to access their stuff. So it, it Meetup lets you. There's just like an application process and you got to be a little bit careful with it and you don't want to like piss them off and but they let you. Which is cool. I love it when people do that. It's amazing. It gives it. It's a much more accessible program, and and you become more valuable as a platform. Um, the other strategy is Facebook, and so what Facebook does. Um, don't peek at my Facebook too much. Let's go to events. Um, events. Uh, so here, events, right? These are things that I'm looking at going towards. The uh, Let's go to dog, right? We'll go to dog and events, and it shows up a bunch of stuff, right? You can't see this unless you are signed in. You have a profile. You are on a legally, like, accessible account, and you have, like, you logged in, right? And there are ways to, like, like force a program to log in. But Facebook gets really iffy with it, and you have to be like really, really careful. And and everything's always changing on Facebook because they're doing. They don't like people scraping from their site. Is the point? Uh, and so we couldn't. We even like looked on GitHub. We found some some like some things that actually scrape from Facebook if you give it your password and you give it a bunch of different things, and it it worked kind of but we would have to it didn't work the way that we wanted it to it didn't like aggregate from everything everything from like the the next week it only aggregated for like the next day and we didn't know how to fix that in a quick amount of time so we gave up on that but the point is when you are trying to aggregate from something like a meetup from something like an eventbrite or something or, or like a facebook eventbrite is fine um you're going to run into issues because if you have to log in to view things then you have a problem right meetup is like that too you need to log in on in Meetup in order to uh, view events locally. You need to log into Facebook in order to view ev um, events and, and things happening there, right? So that's a great lesson for me because if I want to build some, one of these aggregator sites, right? If I want to build something like this in the future, I need to... Uh, not use these kinds of sources, right? I need to use things like Eventbrite. I need to use things that are more publicly accessible. And I need to be aware that there aren't resources online to scrape from Meetup, to scrape from Facebook, because it's illegal. Because Facebook made it illegal. Because Meetup made it illegal, unless you talk to them, right? Um, so, there are certain limitations to aggregation. And that is good to know, because I was thinking of a lot of different aggregation sites, and I need to be careful with that kind of thing. Um, LinkedIn is the same way. So, if you wanted to go onto LinkedIn, and you wanted to scrape some of their stuff... Um, you would have to create a program that logs in, and that's technically illegal because it's not you. I think that's the issue. Um, that said, I think LinkedIn actually lost a court case um, to let people scrape from their site. So that's kind of interesting, and I might want to look further into that, but it would be interesting to scrape from from LinkedIn. Um, I'm going to bitch about LinkedIn a bunch later. <sighs> Events. Um, scraping. <laughs> Aaron, it's true. I I like Aaron's uh I like Aaron's methodology. Aaron is also a super code genius, and Aaron can do whatever the heck he wants. But um, it is. I, honestly, I agree with you, Aaron. Like, if you're if you're messing around with something and you you're pulling from different sources and there's nothing online that makes it, you make some some little kind of workaround solution, whatever. It, it, worst case scenario, you're gonna get a cease and desist. And then you stop. If you don't, and they don't see you doing it, 
keep doing it. Uh, I don't know. I'm not encouraging people to do illegal stuff, but like honestly, like you're kind of joking there, but it's fine. Like just go and do something, and if if people tell you to stop or that it's illegal, then maybe stop doing it, or then maybe like like get a get a permit or whatever the heck, right? Unless it's like super freaking illegal, don't don't be an idiot. But when it comes to just like aggregating information or pulling stuff here and there, like a cease and desist is what they're gonna do, right? It's very doubtful they're gonna jump in and sue you. Unless you're, like, completely screwing over a large entity with a lot of legal power, which you never want to do. Um, but, yeah. So, honestly, like, it's not really illegal until you get a cease and desist. Yes, you're totally right, Aaron, which is funny. <laughs> no, thank God. All right, I'm glad you're not joking, because I'm not joking either. Like, go for it. Heck with it, man. Um, I'm glad I support Rock On. But, yeah, so, realized. Uh, do event notes on Facebook point to original web pages? Oh, okay, so, like... Good point, Toast. So Toast is bugging me on on Twitch. Uh, so do you mean? Let's go check it out. I want to I want to make sure I get what you're saying. So let's go to events. Um, do you mean like do they link to an original web page? So do the event notices, the little event postings, link to uh like? I get what you're saying. So like if uh let's type in dog, dog. Um, we'll go to events. And, like, do these link to an actual web page, right, that we could scrape from independently? I know what you're talking about. And, actually, that's actually a big piece of um, what we're going to say. So this is, a really big, this is a really big one. We wanted to get all the information here. Um, this is Therapy Dog Tuesdays at Pitt. Um, <laughs> should be my new goal to get a cease and desist from LinkedIn. Um, that would be awesome, Hank. I would love to get a cease and desist. I would just love to be communicated, but, like, like bothered by LinkedIn in general for anything, I would, I, like, j it's, uh, <laughs> any attention for me is good attention. <laughs> I need lots of attention, and if it's from LinkedIn, I crave the attention, and currently, I've got no attention from LinkedIn, which is very upsetting, um, but I'm being a little bit aggressive with that, and if you can, I'll tell you about it if you want, um, but uh, toast, so you're totally right, you're totally, totally right, forgot to mention, so we were going to Eventbrite, um, <laughs> cease and desist orders in your KPI. How many cease and desist orders did we get? That's exactly no. It needs the streamer status. Yeah. They, they, they should know who I am. Dang it. I'm important. No. Um, but so Toast, Toast is making a really good point. Go to the source and scrape that. One thing that I forgot to mention. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna, so Toast says do LinkedIn memes. They'll pay attention. There's actually something that I'm probably going to do next stream. Um, that I think you'll all think is funny, and I'll talk about that a little bit. But uh, so, very good point. Uh, I did. We tried Meetup. It's tough. There's authentication. We're gonna try for that. Yay! We'll go for that, right? Yay! Uh, I'm still gonna try to do this. I'm gonna put it on the back burner for a little bit, and I'll, because I'm, I'm doing too much stuff at the moment. But Facebook didn't work because it's a pain in the butt, right? Um, Eventbrite would have worked, but it's only like five percent of our traffic. The other traffic that we didn't go too deep into the investigation of is dog businesses, dog businesses around town, dog event hosts around town, like 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 things like Therapy Dog Tuesdays at Pit, right? So let's go to the actual Facebook page. This is the the Facebook page that hosts all of the dog events at the local university called Pit, right? If uh, what Toast is saying, if they had a website where they posted all of these events independently and that they also used Facebook as a promotional tool, if their was something like that, um, which there is not, sadly. Uh, that was otherwise we would have done it. Uh, then I could just go to that website and create a template and scrape that. Right? <laughs> that would be amazing. Um, actually, so a lot of them we didn't, again didn't do investigation into this. Um, but if we found, and there probably are, if we found a ton of different um, dog businesses around town. Um, and they all were hosting events independently and then also using Facebook or some other things as promotional tools, uh, we could just go to those places and create templates via a web scraper, a little online web scraper, um, to, to just auto-scrape those, right? And then all, we would have all the information we compile from all these different little templates that we create. You only, we don't have to write any code for that. That's really easy because there are tools online that I'm going to go into right now um, for, it's called webscraper.io. Original, isn't it? Um, but this is fun. I want to get good at this. So, what am I? Some of my friends were showing me something called Dash Block, which is essentially the same thing, but I think it's a little bit better. It's just not finished yet, so I can't use Dash Block yet. It still has some. It still makes some mistakes. But check this out. So, learn video tutorials. I'm not gonna turn the audio on on this. Um, but if we watch this. 
here. Uh, it should go through. Can I put this on double speed? Double speed, double speed, two. Um, so essentially what this guy does is he goes to, this is a fake website, right? And he will, uh, he can essentially just kind of grab and scan and pull information automatically from different sources, right? So like he clicks on, let's see if he can do it. Come on, show me, show me, show me. So yeah, there's those. Come on. Because I don't have this downloaded. Otherwise, I would just show you. Um, but it's super cool. Subcategory link. Yes, sure. Awesome. Show me the goodness, man. <clears throat> ba, ba, ba. You name something. You select it as like a title. And then it automatically inputs it. You take something else. You click it. So like what he's doing is essentially he doesn't have to write any code down here. He just names the, the element something. He clicks the element on the web page and it auto grabs it, right? And creates a web scraper um, for the site, right? And he's grabbing the image right now. He's going to grab the description and it'll automatically go and it'll find things that look similar on all the same web pages across the website and it'll it'll pull it all in. So it's essentially like you can just click, click, click and, and make a little template on a website to, to have it auto scrape, right? It's oh this is oh my god that's so cool look at that you can just pull it pull it pull it um, that's a nice little UI but that's what it does right so it's just a, it's a way to make a web scraper yourself without coding anything which is just on a basic level which is so cool and I'm waiting for Dashblock to get a little bit better because Dashblock looks like it's better it's just not finished yet and it keeps messing up right but the UI looks looks a lot easier on Dashblock, so I'm excited. But in the meantime, Web Scraper, like if we if if the dog website that I was just looking at, if the, if like the the pit um thing, uh the pit like a uh, dog therapy dog session Tuesdays, right? If that had a website, um I could just go to that website. I could use something like WebScraper.io to just make a template. So whenever a new event pops up, it scrapes it, puts it into a Google Sheet or, or uh, an Excel sheet that's tied to a Google Sheet, or whatever the heck, right? Not that hard. Um, that's all no code, which is great. We love no code. Um, so we could do that, and then I could also try, probably try to find um, like a Chrome macro. I would love, okay, so Aaron, Aaron knows a lot about this. If anybody, especially Aaron, <laughs> um, knows anything about Chrome macros, so how to run like a macro, like how to no code build a macro on Chrome, or, or some other web browser, maybe like Mozilla, because Mozilla is doing a lot of fancy tech right now. If there are any cool um, macro settings, so like it can record clicks and it can record like going to certain websites and it, and it could record me using other uh, like um, Chrome extensions. If there's an extension that does that or just a program where I can build Chrome uh, macros, that would be amazing. I need that really badly. Um, that would be so, so fun. And it would allow me to build a lot more. So let me know if you know anything about that, Aaron. Um, but in the meantime, to, uh, toast to, to a district problem. Ideally, yes, everything would be off of websites, and we could just scrape the websites, right? That would be the goal. Uh, if I'm doing an aggregation site, like if I'm doing an aggregation site in the future, or a newsletter, or, or a website, or something like that, I could just, uh, and, and it, it's all run off of websites, and they don't put anything on LinkedIn, or Facebook, or Instagram, or anything like that, and they, they host all of their events on, like, an Eventbrite, or something that's publicly accessible, like their websites, I could just scrape the hell out of all of that. No problem. Easy. Um, Chrome macros, so, like, I could automate the, this web scraper. <sighs> Why not just OS macros? Yeah, that's fair. That's actually a good point. It doesn't need to be Chrome. I guess you're right. Yeah, whatever. Just any way to build macros. Oh yeah, I've seen Octoparse. So Dan Toast just commented something about Octoparse and how I can use you can use that for for social scraping. Just anything about like uh, Aaron just to, to finish up what I was saying there. Anything that you can like that you know about like easy to make macros um, would be amazing. Like screen recorders that just copy like the the actions that I do on a screen. Something like that would be super super sick. Um, so, what's up, Firemelon? Oh my gosh, I haven't seen you in forever. You can do that in OS macros? Really? I'll write that down. OS macros. It's built, oh, it's built into Mac OS. Uh, yeah, 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 Dan was telling me about that. I don't have a Mac. This is a Windows computer. Am I... Fucked. 
Um, hi, Firemelon. It's good to see you. I haven't seen you in forever. I feel like it. I wanna, I wanna hear what you're up to. Hope you're doing dang well. Let's check out the the links that uh, Toast was sending us. So, this is Octoparse. Uh, yeah, five things you need to know before scraping data from Facebook. They don't like it. Windows 2, I think. Really? Ooh. I would love if you knew of a Windows web scraper creator. Um, like a micro for living up. Yeah. Oh my God. Wait. 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 Dude, I have such a funny, such a funny story about that. I'm, I'm gonna talk about macros in a second. Um, keyboard maestro. Perfect. That's what I want to hear. Keyboard maestro. Keyboard maestro. Work faster with macros from Mac OS. Okay. So this is for Mac OS. I wonder if they have. Why are all the automations for Mac? The heck? Do all programmers use Mac? They probably do. Um, so speaking of macros, there's something really funny that happened when I was a kid. I was obsessed with old school RuneScape. Um, if you know what that is. Like, I love that game. And I actually got back into it recently. They, had, they put out a mobile version. I've been messing around with that. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. Turns out Dan... Uh, also, was is obsessed is still obsessed with old school RuneScape, and so he's been he got into it a lot last year, and he actually like built some crazy macros to like to try to like level up like ridiculous skills and all these this fancy thing in the game. Um, Linux, ooh, oh man, this is gonna get all complicated. Oh man, we'll talk about this later, Aaron. I I do want to find a macro thing, um, but anyway, macros. When I was young. I was obsessed with old school RuneScape. I'm still obsessed with it. But I, I, there's a skill in the in the game called woodcutting, which is essentially where the more trees you chop down, the better you get at chopping down trees, and the the higher level trees you can chop down, right? Like you can get up to like a magic tree, ooh, ooh. Um, and you can chop down like bigger and bigger trees. Fancy, right? Um, basically, what? Um, no, no, Aaron. Aaron just told me no. I'm offended. Oh, yeah, no, I know Linux is an OS. Does that mean, like, would I have to download that? I don't, I've never used Linux, if that's not obvious. Um, but anyway, so, woodcutting skill, uh, very, very annoying, because it's, like, very, very tedious, right? You have to chop down tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of trees. But it's probably the easiest skill to level up, because RuneScape is just ridiculous. All the skills are impossible to get to, to really high levels. It's just, they just, they keep you on the platform forever, and they keep you playing the game. Um... <laughs> But uh, my dad, I had my dad, who was great at coding. He, he's a he's a he's a tech genius in and of himself. He uh, built me just so I wouldn't have to play. We we like kind of went over the game and like what are the things that we need to do. And he he made a macro that that looks at my screen and finds a certain color. Um, to uh, he uh, he made a little macro to go and click on trees or a little thing called Ivy um, that would auto chop down stuff. So I didn't even have to sit next to the computer and it essentially got me to the highest level of wood cutting possible really, really quickly because I didn't have to do it myself and spend hours in front of the computer. It was really, really funny. Um, it was a hilarious, hilarious uh, situation. But, um, Dan, I was talking with Dan, and I told Dan about that. He thought it was hilarious. Dan went way further with it. Like he like screenshotted a bunch of different like enemy monsters, and he made macros for each different little enemy monster, so he could just sit and do his like his math math homework while his runes his RuneScape character leveled up like this really really special combat skill. It was super super crazy. Um, it was hilarious. Uh, okay, yeah. Best use a virtual machine to play with it. I thought so. Yeah, I need to get something like AWS or some 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 uh, virtual uh, system to to mess with something like Linux. I think I think that's probably going to be better because I don't want to totally destroy my computer because I will. I'm bad at complicated stuff. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, I may ask for for some people's help um, on. Uh, stuff like this, but yeah. So anyway, macros are funny. They're hilarious. Um, I would love to use macros for for more actually <laughs> important stuff other than video games. Um, oh, VMware. I have used VMware. I'm gonna check that out. Um, but yeah. And then let's look at Octoparse's video. I've heard. Whoops. Um, I've heard that Octoparse sucks, and they're probably gonna advertise themselves. Uh, Dan told me that Octoparse is a pain in the butt. 
They're probably yeah. See, number one is Octoparse. Everybody likes to create content around their own stuff. Um, <clears throat> Screaming from Twitter, distracting posts from Instagram. Uh, yeah. So I think Facebook in general has just made it really really hard. But I think a lot of other things are accessible. Like Instagram is fine. Instagram is fine. Twitter is fine. You can look at those without having an account. But Facebook made everything like. Ugh, you have to have an account. You have to have everything. You have to be signed in. You have to be a legitimate blah, 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 blah. Nobody cares. So Facebook is tough. There are ways around it. We actually created a way around it. We looked up stuff like on GitHub. It was like Facebook web scraper. Uh, scraping. It was very funny. And then a little thing on popped up on, uh, not Facebook web scraping, scraper. It showed up GitHub. GitHub. Uh. Huh. Facebook events. Yeah, it was this one. Um, it was this one. We just pulled information here, and actually, we have it loaded up here. Look at all this. Look at all this complicated ass stuff. I can't deal with it, man. Oh, so many lines of code. But anyway, so we were messing with this. Dan was messing with this. I was not messing with this. Um, Dan was touching this, and I was a scared little child. Um, but basically, he was, it's using Beautiful Soup, a little web scraping program, and it does pull stuff. Because look, we, we compiled like different Facebook pages. Say it once dog training. The the little pit uh, Tuesday, like every Tuesdays they do pit stuff. Um, animal friends, humane animal rescue. Like all these different things. We were looking at it and we were, it worked to some degree, but not in the best way that we wanted it to. And so there was going to be a lot of editing involved. We didn't want to have some big fancy code application to solve everything, right? No code is always better than code if you use a really simple problem. Um, but the point is, web scrapers are easy. If it's an accessible website, like like an actual website, um, Facebook is really the only problem. If it's Meetup, you can find a way around it. They let you. They're they're nice. They're gentle. They're wholesome. Bless. Um, but everything else you can basically solve as long as it's not Facebook. Facebook is a pain in the pain in the living booty, right? Um, so, did you try Beautiful Soup Plus Selenium? No, we didn't go very hard with tech. Uh, like Dan knew the goal was to I'm I'm sure Dan could do it, but like the we didn't go too hard with the tech because we it's uh, we didn't want to spend a ton of time doing that. Um, you can hack a user agent together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Um, there are ways to do it, but it's not no code, right? It's not simple. You got to build something out. Um, you got to build your own kind of thing. It's it's it depends totally on on what's going on. Um, it's yeah, and I think Facebook's cracked down on it a little bit more since. Um, yeah. Regardless, Facebook is tough. That's the moral of the story. I know that now. I will not be fucking with Facebook probably for a while. Um, but there are ways around it. So let me pull text right off the screen. And, uh, well, okay. So, but you still need to log into Facebook, right? And I think that's the point that Aaron's making. You still need to log into Facebook um, and do a bunch of fanciness. But um, it's still interesting, right? It's still really cool. Like, there are blockades to some of these things, but I guarantee you there are ways to grab stuff from Facebook and different things from Facebook. There are, here, hold on, check this out. So there are different automations. Um, Ghost Inspector, interesting. Phantom Buster is a cool thing that we should check out. It did, like Phantom Buster normally would have worked. There's a lot of things you can do with Phantom Buster. Um, store. Uh, like they love LinkedIn automation right now. Uh, LinkedIn profile scraper, LinkedIn network booster. I'm probably going to use this. Um, lead generation workflow, maybe. Uh, Google Maps search export. What? Really? Ah. Uh. I've been looking for something exactly like this. I wonder how expensive it is. Whatever. Um, but there are there is stuff here for Facebook. So Facebook um, that I could automatically do without any fancy code or anything complicated. Right, I guess I'll just pull this. Um, yeah. So Facebook auto liker, events guest exporter, page reviews collector, message sender, group extractor. There's all these cool things, right? Um, but there isn't, and there's even like an events one. 
I think. Yeah, events guest exporter. So there are cool things that I can do with no code, and it pulls it all to a CSV, which is exactly what we want, because we could just ship it to a Google Sheet, and then ship it to something like Sheet to Site, or or a Bubble, or 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 a newsletter like like uh, maybe like a like a Mailchimp, or it was using Zapier. We could do all this with no code, but it just happens, just so happens that um that Phantom Buster doesn't have stuff for events. So there are other things that I could do, just probably with events, it's going to be tougher if they're on. Like events are a little bit hard when it comes to Facebook. Not a big problem. Just so happens that it's going to take me a little bit longer for for Pupsburg. Um, so that's cool. The let's, uh, where am I? Yeah. So that's the way to make it work with with like code and fanciness. Um, I'll check out Ghost Inspector and, and Selenium sounds good. These are all tech things though, right? The the goal is to do this with no tech to make it as accessible as possible. Funny thing is, there totally is a way to do this without tech. Um, it's a little bit lame. It feels like cheating. It's not, but it feels like cheating. Um, I could just go and I could compile, let's say, uh, on Meetup, right? I go to meetup.com. And I go and uh, search for dog. Oh, shush. There are, you're lying to me. Dog, uh, dog, 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 dog. Pets. Um, pets? No, not groups. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Doug. Um, look at this. <laughs> look at all these. There's a pug meetup. There's a dog meetup. There's a dachshund meetup. Um, there's all these really, really cute goddamn motherfucking things. Uh, but, like, see this, right? Like, I can go here. I can click the Pittsburgh dog meetup. And I have a URL, right? Pittsburgh dogs. Meetup.com slash Pittsburgh dogs, right? Cute, wholesome. I can see all the upcoming events. There's a night walk on the Panhandle Trail. Hoorah! They have a whole lot of past events, 199. They're active, right? This is a source where events come from. I could go on Facebook. Um, and I could find... Frickin... Uh, dog. Dog. Events. I could find this. The, the Therapy Dog Tuesdays at Pit, right? and I could go to their events little section, and it will tell me when the next events are coming up, right? These are the past events, these are the upcoming events. It, it shows me the seven, the next seven, right? Oh, here's all the next co upcoming events. Um, this information is here. If I didn't want to use code to go in and grab all this, I could just go to upwork.com and I could send a VA, a virtual assistant, I could hire a virtual assistant for an ongoing project. So every week for like 10 bucks, um, somebody off in, in some, uh, I know, where's the Corgi meetup? Tell me about it. But somebody off in, in, in a country where the US dollar means a lot more than it means here, um, I could pay them like 10 bucks a week to go and uh, go to all these different URLs that I can collect easily and all these different little newsletters that I can personally collect easily and just tell them every week, every like Monday, to go through, copy and paste from all these different little sources themselves, pop it into a Google Sheet that I give them, and then I do the rest of the automation myself. I could do that. I could easily do that. It would just cost a little bit of money, right? That's probably what I'm going to try to do. I'm probably going to try to automate the hell out of it with VAs, um, virtual assistants. It's not that hard. It's way easier than anything else. It just costs a little bit of money. So it's totally cheating. It's not any fanciness. It is automated, but like, you know what I mean. Like it's it's there's there's no there's no fancy tech behind it. There's nothing fancy behind it. It's literally just paying somebody somewhere else to do it for me, which is the business solution. <laughs> which is again kind of cheating. Whatever. It works. I'm probably going to do it at some point. That's the probably the plan. And, and so, hold on. Actually, this is important. <laughs> That's called using wetware. Exactly. Toast says it's called using wetware. I like wetware. Uh, um, so this is important, though. That works in this solution. And that's probably the best solution. To be totally honest, it's, it, it's, it takes way less time. It would take me like two, maybe three hours to set that up. And then it's done. Right, and then it's completely it's going. I pay like what, like five hundred bucks if I can get it for a nice price. I pay like what five hundred bucks a year, and I have a fully automated pooch thing, 
So now all I need uh, now I have all the content that I need. Everything is everything works great. Ever it's linking to Facebook. It's linking to all these different things. I can automate a website. I can automate everything. It's probably going to cost me overall, including all the tools, including a URL, including the the little website creator, including paying the VA, probably like six hundred dollars per year. No, mm, no, probably more like eight hundred dollars per year. Right? It's a bit of money. It's a bit of cash. Not ideal. But that's probably what I'm going to do a little bit later. Uh, and then all I need to do is just gain followers and see if I can I can sell ads and, and a bunch of different other things. But that is probably the best solution exclusively because this is hyper-local, right? This is hyper-local, hyper-topic focused. So that because, because I can grab all of the information sources and I know where everything is coming from. And it's like I don't have to – and there's not that much information, second of all. There's probably what, like – Two events per week, three events per week, right? Over in the, across the whole city, probably two or three, two, three, maybe four pooch events per week. That's why the VA works. It wouldn't work if there was a hundred events per week. If this was national, if this like, if I didn't know all of the exact Facebook pages and couldn't pinpoint where everything exactly is coming from, and I needed to use a search term. If there was even a little bit more information coming through this, I would have to automate it. I would have to. I would have to build some code base. I would have to build a program. I would have to like. It would have to be automated, right? It would have to be using code. Code. Code is necessary at scale. Like build like like fancy technical solutions are necessary at scale, but when it comes to really really hyper localized, very very small information sources like this, I can just hire a VA and it works and it's probably the best thing because you can test it out super quickly and hyper like prototype it super super quickly, see if you can get a market for it and and test whether or not it's going to fail rapidly, right? I would just start by paying a, a VA for a month, like 15 bucks a week, a little bit more than I would like a little bit more than I would do for a long per period of time. I would say like here's here's 60 bucks for the next 4 weeks. I want you to aggregate from these sources whenever you see something new. Every 2 or 3 days hop on and and then grab me information from from these like 20 or 30 URLs, right? Um, I would have them aggregate it. I would push it out. I would see if I get a following. If I can't get people to sign up for that newsletter and people don't care, Oh well, I dropped 60 bucks, right? I don't have any fancy code that I put a ton of time into. I didn't waste any of my personal time. I didn't do anything that I didn't want to. And I tested out, I, I super quickly tested out the validity of a new business, right? So when it comes to small form tests, VAs are probably the best solution unless it's a large form, like a large group of information that you're pulling from. So just be aware of that. Um, that's what I learned, which is awesome. Very great, like kind of lessons. Um, very happy with what I learned. Awesomeness. We've gone over all this. Yay. Um, uh, and then we have a lot of time left. Dang. Yeah, that's what happens when you suck. When you don't <laughs> actually build something. Oh, so. Um, <coughs> quick thing. Uh, my I was talking with my friend. And uh, LinkedIn memes were mentioned earlier. One of the things that I'm probably going to build next, uh, and this is super easy. This isn't like a tech solution. This is just kind of a little a little uh, content channel that might be fun. Maybe I can sustain it. Maybe I don't have enough time. It's super easy to test out. It takes nothing, though. What if, please give me feedback. What if I went and, actually, I wish I could show you here. Uh, LinkedIn flex. This is really funny. This guy's great. Um, check this out. So this is LinkedIn Flex. This is an Instagram profile. They have like 63,000 followers. They're very popular. They're hilarious. Um, and it says daily source of cringe. Oh, can you hear that? Yeah. It's the fire truck. Anyway. Um... Uh, this it's basically just a little meme page for uh, LinkedIn things. They find people that are doing really, really crummy stuff on LinkedIn or being really annoying on LinkedIn, and they make fun of it. That's essentially all it is. And there's some really, really funny stuff on here. Uh, where was it? Where was it? There was such a good freaking meme. Um, I actually found one of this guy's things. I, I recently liked his thing. Um... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I know a lot of the people on here. I'm connected with a lot of the people that he makes fun of on here. It's really funny. I love the stuff that he does here. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Ah, oh, there was such a good comment. 
uh, point is, this is a meme page, right? This is just a meme page for LinkedIn stuff. They're making fun of LinkedIn. Um, there are like Instagram meme pages. There's a bunch of things. They did this on Instagram just because it's easier to build a following there for meme stuff. But what if I wanted to be a total dweeb and I made an actual LinkedIn like page, like company page <laughs> for LinkedIn memes? And I, whenever I was there, I, like every, maybe like once a week, two times a week, I would make some little LinkedIn meme on like Canva, making fun of people like this, because this is clearly a great way to um, to make fun of people. Uh, like people really enjoy this this type of content, leaning on this kind of thing, and also making like the like uh, like typical memes, like the 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 LinkedIn influencer starter pack, right? <laughs> I put a bunch of like bullshit up of like like LinkedIn Live and like uh like like ridiculous um thumbnails and like I, and I come up with a bunch of clever little things to make fun of of the stuff that's going on in LinkedIn because LinkedIn honestly right now is just excuse my language fucking ridiculous, ugh. It's a lot of the stuff on here just, just, uh, it bothers me so much. It's so BS and it's so fluffy and, and ridiculous and not helpful to anybody at all. And it's just so clearly meant to gain a following. Um, ugh, I hate it. Uh, but it would be really funny to make fun of that, right? And maybe LinkedIn would hate it. There were, there was a little page created called LinkedIn memes and nobody did anything with it. Maybe LinkedIn shut it down or got really pissed at them. I don't know if LinkedIn would appreciate it. I don't know if they would care at all, but it could be funny, right? It could be really funny, and it could like uh, it could be, it could add some silliness to the people trying to be way overly serious on the fucking platform. Um, there are a lot of people I know that would love this. I think Lacey Abachi is a really really good example of somebody who would love this kind of thing. She makes fun of LinkedIn a lot, and she knows there's a lot of silliness in it. Richard Moore, I know a lot of like actually big people on LinkedIn that would kind of enjoy this kind of thing. They love making fun of LinkedIn. They love every time they talk about it, they're always teasing about it. There's a lot of great stuff, right? Um, so it might be fun. Could be fun to meme on some people and make fun of some, some influencers uh, and just make fun of the platform in general because I know people are frustrated with it. Every time I post something about like, yo, LinkedIn sucks, everybody's like, oh, LinkedIn sucks. <laughs> Everybody loves it. Um, so that could be fun, right? That could be kind of fun. I would love some. I would love people to submit memes too. That would be great if, we could, if I could just like, I mean, that's like a, a form of automation, right? You crowdsource. But I bet a lot of people could create some really sick memes. Um, it'd be really funny. I think it'd be really. I think it would be enjoyable. So that's probably what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna do a LinkedIn memes page on LinkedIn and see if I can just kind of mess with some people and and make fun of some stuff. Um, if it doesn't work, oh well, whatever. Hopefully, I won't get in trouble for it. I really don't think anybody's gonna care. Um, but yeah, rock on. Making fun of all the BS on LinkedIn. Making fun of Gary Vaynerchuk. Making fun of a bunch of other people. Making fun of Ola, or what is it, Oleg. Making fun of a bunch of people doing funny things. Because there's so many people just, ugh, kill me on the platform. So that's probably what we're going to be doing next one. If you want me to, like, if there's anything you want to add to that, I would love people to hop on, help me make it, whatever. Help me make some memes, dude. I'll shout you out in the meme. Um, it would be funny if we could get a big following on a LinkedIn meme page. Uh, and, and incentivize people, because if you make... Uh, if you make it happen, right? Like if, if you if they make a cool meme and you shout them out in the meme, like this meme was made by ha ha, um, then people will go and follow that person, right? Um, so it could be a nice promotional tool for other people. It could help other other LinkedIners, uh, but it can also just be fun. It can also just be nice. And I got a lot of meme ideas. I got a lot of good meme ideas. It's not serious. I feel LinkedIn should be reserved for things that are professional and serious. Um, but we'll see. I still think you should make those hoodies, meme hoodies. What do you mean, like, entrepreneur hoodies? I'm going to make entrepreneur hoodies, by the way. Can we look that up right now? Ugh. Totally. I just, ugh. Yeah, entrepreneur hoodies would be great. Um, create fully custom hoodies. There's so many interesting businesses like this. Custom hoodies. Um... No minimums, free logo, free logo edits, squad lockers, fascinating hood. He's a hood designer. Design your own customized hoodies. Custom Ink is a big one. Um, I think they have limited custom hoodies online. I don't know. I'll find it at some point, but I'm going to totally make a hoodie in, like, LinkedIn blue. <laughs> with, like, under and actually, I'm probably going to do it my website colors, so it's going to be 
entrepreneur.blog. Um, I'm probably going to do it with like like the black background and the like it's like it's like a soft black and a soft white. I'm probably going to build it that way. Um, but yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah, zazzle, zazzle them up. But yeah, so that's cute. Anyway, um, the only thing that I have scheduled left is a lot of ranting. Um, I bitched about LinkedIn a little bit. Uh, they do allow you to scrape stuff, right? So there are tools on Phantom Buster, which I'm really excited about trying to use. I wonder how much they cost. Let's actually check it out because this would be nice. LinkedIn automation. So let's check LinkedIn network posters. Send information and to a list of LinkedIn users with a personalized message. Use this Phantom. Um, sign up with Phantom Buster. Uh, full access to Phantom Buster for free day. So there's two days. Comfort colors is really good material. That lasts a long time. Comfort colors, really? Okay, cool. I'll check out comfort colors. Also, what's up? How's it going, dude? Thank you for hopping on my stream. Comfort colors. Oh, this is so cute. Oh, look at that wholesome man. Oh, this is so cute. <laughs> Adult, long sleeve. What do we got? Hooded tee. I want like a thick hoodie. This is a good looking boy. I like his hair. Look at that poof. Uh, what do we got? Long sleeve, sweats, French terry. What is this? They do look nice. I don't know why I'm doing this right now. I'll check this out later. Um, <laughs> yeah, weekend's going well for me. Exactly. Yes, toast. Time to rant. Um, so... Yeah, so a little bit about LinkedIn. Like, I want to try this out. Phantom Buster looks really cool. Frickin', uh, what's her name? What's her name? What's her name? Oh, I love her a ton. John Fry, if you're on the thing, what's her name? Oh my gosh, why am I blanking? Sarah Gross, sorry. Um, Sarah is super dope. Sarah Gross is like the goddess of automations and, and growth hacking and everything like that. She has awesome tutorials on LinkedIn. Great, great person. She showed me Phantom Buster, and Phantom Buster is super freaking dope. Like, think of all the things that you could do if you just had a list. Like, I could go through all these different posts, and I could just compile a big fat list using, like, uh, one tab and just make a big fat list of CSV file of people that I should friend, people that I should connect to, and then I could auto-connect to all of them using Phantom Buster. Woo! Pretty cool. That would be sick. I would totally pay for that. I was initially just going to have a VA go through and do that, but, like, I don't want to give people access to my LinkedIn profile, right? So if I can automate it through this, that would be sick, sick, dude. Um, LinkedIn also, I believe, came out with events recently. Let's check it out. I'm curious about that because I would love to. I'm probably going to use the LinkedIn events for to like. Um, oh, I got message something. I'll check it out later. Uh, events, 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 events. Events. Salary and sa I don't see it. I don't see it. Oh, create a company page. LinkedIn memes. <laughs> um, events is supposed to come out at some point soon. I don't know where. I'll figure it out. But LinkedIn events are going to be a thing, and so you're totally going to be getting more notifications from, from LinkedIn, right? I'm probably going to try to host some events on LinkedIn at some point, maybe locally. Um, maybe just... And I'm also going to use them for my live streams, right? So that you can have a direct... Uh, like, So that way it's all in the fucking... Uh, go to the homepage. Ooh. Events! Events! Plus... Hey! There we go. Thank you, Olga. Um, <laughs> sorry, I yelled. Um, so this is what it is, right? You can make a little new, little event, name of the event, blah, blah, blah. Venue details, location. I would just pop my little uh, like um, LinkedIn stuff in here uh, so that people would just join it. I would probably just run it over LinkedIn, right? Um, but um, yeah. So LinkedIn events are cool. I'm probably going to be using those. You're going to be getting more notifications from LinkedIn on my stuff, right? Because I... Uh, um, I want to be able to notify people in the app as much as possible, right? Um, but I'll also probably be doing the calendar invites too, because I if you sign so context if you sign on to my newsletter on my website entrepreneur.blog, you get uh, a newsletter every week um, and a little calendar invites for my streams, which is basically just every six thirty Saturday. Um, maybe I'll phase that out. I don't know. Um. Not the newsletter. I'm going to keep the newsletter because the newsletter is important. Because there's going to be a lot of stuff that I'm going to be doing in the future with the newsletter. 
So it's good to have like an audience that, that like I know is more interested than just the general LinkedIn audience. Um, but yeah, expect LinkedIn events. That's all. Now, <sighs> motherfucking rants. We got a long rant coming. <laughs> this is a long rant. Usually I like to focus on more informational stuff, but because I have, because I screwed up yesterday, didn't have a lot. I did learn a lot. Yay. But, um, I didn't, uh, um, <clears throat> I didn't, uh, complete what I wanted to complete. So basically we're just going to rant for the rest of the time. I got like half an hour, 35 minutes. So let's get going. So <clears throat> I was talking with my dad recently. My dad was kind of bugging me about, um, how like my career path in general right and how like i perceive it and what i like i what i uh, i want to go for right um and i kind of made an argument that i think is a little bit interesting or a little bit different from 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 typical um maybe it's not but like i i would love to share it regardless uh he was interested in the concept of like me going for a larger startup right i know tons of people my age i know tons of people younger than me that are like murdering it, like killing it right now with ridiculously awesome, like large scale startups, right? Like they're trying to build something that like reaches a billion dollars or, or like they get investment for, or they go to accelerators for like real, like a full, like completely consuming all, all encompassing company, right? I would love to do that at some point. That's like a startup. That's what everybody, that's what almost all of my peers are trying to do right now. But like, <sighs> That sounds fun. That sounds awesome. I would love to do that at some point. It's not like I like. It's not like I have like a, a an exact choice. It's not like I'm I'm some genius kid that can like. Oh, you know what? I could run a startup easy, but I might as well do some. I want to do something else. It's not. I'm not like being like artistic with anything. Honestly, I don't think I'm ready for a startup, and I think I would screw it up uh, like a few times before I got it right. That's expected. You should expect that when you're going into startups. But like an all-consuming company that would like just you know kind of just. Uh, uh, like like one big thing, right? That could that could get investment, that could do whatever. The problem is like that kind of scares me. Not because not just because I don't feel like I could do it, but because mainly because like I everybody that I know in that space, like their life is gone. Like your life is gone. You don't have a social life. You do, like your you you limit your interaction with friends. Like you your fucking your life becomes that company. And that's fine. Like that's what I want to do at some point. That sounds fun to some people and I'm sure some people love that. But goddamn, I'm 22. Like who if 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 I had a choice, theoretically, if I could just decide between like running some big fancy startup and like possibly making a ton of money, maybe, I don't know, um or or doing like what I'm trying to do right now, which is a bunch of little things, right? Like little mini mini companies or mini situations or or or, or situations like that, right? Uh, or maybe I build like one little newsletter online that is mostly automated, but it gets me like maybe five hundred bucks a month or one k a month, and I build the little four one two thrift thing up, right? And I do, and I'm able to like help thrift stores, and I get like like five hundred a thousand dollars from that per month, and I maybe like I can make maybe like three or four of these. I live in Pittsburgh. The cost of living here is really really low, right? Um, like if I could. I'm tar I'm trying to do those things instead. I'm trying to do little things instead that I can have more of a chance of automating, that I can have more of a chance of of selling, that I can have more of like that I can build up quicker too. Because like the concept of just having my life consumed at 22 by some awesome startup that I would have a lot of fun with but wouldn't like have a lot of flexibility in life. That scares me, right? Like I don't oh, I I would love to do that when I'm like 30. I would love to do that when I'm like 30. Right when I feel like I've I've accomplished a lot and I'm bored and I want to like tackle something really really huge like I want to tackle some like maybe I, I try to tackle uh like like cleaning up the oceans and we 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 find to make it a, bit, a way to make profit on that or we find like grants around or we try to solve like some really big problem that I really really care about yay yay awesome yes like that would but it would end up consuming my life sure like I'm happy to do that when I'm older but I like I just I want to encourage kids to chill the fuck out like with a lot of these startups cuz like yes you're you're being super successful but like it ends up just sucking your life away like i know people i know every single startup ceo that i talk to whether they're young or old will literally tell me like dude like don't don't go into a startup right out of college please don't like it's it, it, you're going to it, like it'll ruin your life like you'll have fun sure you'll you'll work on something you love sure but like you won't have a life beyond the business um and i love working I sit at home and work all the time already all day. <laughs> I want like yeah, exactly. Olga says like enjoy your 20s. You can you can do great things and still make a bunch of money. But like starting a company early is great. Just make sure 
that it doesn't consume your life and the chances of succeeding massively on some big fancy tech product startup are like really low i don't care how right you do it they're really low um yeah exactly um totally dude so and uh so jess says no one's ready they happen organically whether you want them to or not um exactly so olga i'm gonna get you in a second olga um and then uh, you said, I think you know what you're ready for me. I just don't see myself doing anything else that would give me a that level of accomplishment. Given that I'm at this point, I'm willing to sacrifice other aspects of my life to pursue this. Hope this helps. Pros and cons for startups at 21 or 30. Absolutely, 100% agree. I'm not crapping on anybody else. I'm just saying, like, for me personally, I agree with you completely, dude. The best way to phrase it, you brilliant fucking phrasing, absolutely perfect way to, to explain it. If you want to, and you just, like, be aware that it will consume a lot of your life, right? Be aware that it will suck up a lot of your time be aware that that's what you're going to be focusing like for years and years and years like a lot of your mental energy your your emotional energy or everything on some people love that that sounds really exciting to me i would love to do that just not right now right like i would i would much rather like see if i could build like a bunch of different little businesses learn a ton about a bunch of different industries about like how to build tools with, like how to build all sorts of different things with low code how to how to do hackathons really really quickly how to how, like building an audience i would rather spend it like like just learning everything and experimenting with a ton of ton of different stuff and making like a solid amount of like like sustaining myself right maybe saving up a little bit um, and then when I'm 30 I just like I know like everything that there is to know about like about about building things I know everything there is to know I have a giant audience that can help me build these kind of things I can I have places that I can hire I have places I, I know how to handle a lot of different situations right um, I'm maybe I'm not as ambitious. As a lot of people my age, maybe I am just a bit of a wuss. Like, I don't know. Like, it totally depends, right? It totally depends on the person. But just be aware. Like, like a, like a startup is not... You don't have to do a startup right out of college to, to be super successful, right? Um, if you want to pursue entrepreneurship, a giant, big, fancy startup is not the only way. Only point that I'm trying to make. Um, so I'm probably going to try to do a bigger startup later. That would be amazing if, I'm, if possible. Um... Uh, if I can handle it, I don't know if I could do it. Um, gonna try anyway, though, at some point. Yeah, exactly. When you're ready. No rush. No fucking rush. Goddamn. Um, so, yeah. You may not want to either. But I, I want to build little things. And I want to learn how to build little things. And then once I feel like I'm at the certain point where I, I have learned enough, I, I am bored, I, I haven't solved something big enough, or, or, or I have, for some reason, like, I just, I want to consume my life with something, and I'm going to enjoy that. Hell yeah, I'm going to go for it. But right now, like, there's no problem with running little businesses, little lifestyle businesses, little little projects, um, little side hustles. There's really, And there's nothing fucking wrong with getting a job. God damn. There's really nothing wrong with getting a job. That's how everybody else does it. <laughs> there's a reason that it's good. There's a reason that it's healthy. It lets you, it lets you live a normal, healthy life, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, so... Um, you know, I want to learn some code too. Trust me, Jess. I want to learn some code. I will. <laughs> you always give me shit for it. You're totally right. I'm going to 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 learn this, how to develop and how to build some actual shit. Don't worry. Do not worry. I will. I, it will. It will occur. It will like naturally. I just support no code because for for people that are unlike you, um, Jess knows a lot of code. Jess can build whatever he wants, um, which is awesome, and he has a lot more flexibility than a lot of other people. But there are really really easy ways to prototype things really quickly, to test things out, even if you do know code, um, to get an a feel for whether or not the product that you're trying to build is actually good, right? Um, and a lot of people miss that step, even if you are a brilliant coder, even if you are a super genius that can build whatever you want. So I like to support that just because like most college students are not, are not developers. Right. And a lot of them are really like, most of them are not interested, like are, uh, a lot of them are interested in entrepreneurship. Right. Um, and they don't have the time to, to, to learn how to develop something. And they're probably, maybe they're not going to be good at it. Maybe it's just not their forte. I'm shit at coding. <laughs> like, I've tried it. My dad is, like, again, like a super, a super genius coder. He can build whatever he wants. And he tried to teach me from a very young age, tried, like, how to get into it. And, like, ugh. For some reason, I just didn't get engaged into it at all. It's just not my forte. It's not my not my cup of tea. But I will learn it at some point. It will be very fun. It's just not my cup of tea right now. I much prefer building things that exist already, like using existing tools to build things already, right? Um, I probably will get into it in the future, though. And I'm going to have to learn it at some point if I'm going to build anything even remotely good. It's just a fact of life. Um, but to get started, you don't need it.
You really don't need it. You really don't need it. So that's what I try to support. That's why I'm so big on that. I apologize for being for being a piece of shit, Jess. Um, but and you're totally right. I'm going to learn it at some point. But like for now, I don't need to. Um, and if you don't need to, then heck with it. Anyway. Um, yeah, no, yeah, totally. It's it's just different kind of approaches. But you are right. I I will. Ne- it's going to be necessary at some point. Um, and yes, yeah, totally toast. I would love to. Um, love to get into turning small companies around. That'd be great. Imagine just getting good enough. So, oh, there are so many cool people out there that like I, some. I'm getting into Twitter, which is a mistake, but <laughs> I'm getting into Twitter. It is the only other business platform, so I feel like I'm probably going to try to build up a, a bit of a following there too, because people really like no code stuff and people really like the kind of tech that I'm working with there. And there's a big like there's a big community around that kind of thing. Um, excuse me. Oh. Um, getting into Twitter and I keep seeing a lot of these amazing entrepreneurs that are essentially just like posting on Twitter because they have like 50,000 followers of, of super tech interested awesome entrepreneur people and they'll just fucking post something on Twitter and be like yo uh, thinking of building an agency around no code and using like Webflow and a couple of other online tools to just build websites and apps for people who wants to run it for me and then people are legitimately like, ooh, me, I'll email you. Ooh, me, I'll email you. Ooh, me, I'll email you. And, like, <laughs> he probably found somebody to run a freaking agency, a little business for him just like that. Like, what kind of a super goddamn motherfucking entrepreneur do you have to be <laughs> to get shit like that going? That would be, that. I, I retweeted his thing, and I was like, this is who I want to be when I'm older. But, like, dang, there's so many cool people out there doing amazing things. Um, yeah, so... I, I, I've been feeling a little bit down lately because there's just so many people doing amazing things. I, and I'm working like decently hard, but I feel like I'm working on the wrong shit, right? I, again, want to build little bit, mini businesses and I'm focusing on building my, my, my following. I'm focusing on producing cool content and focusing on the live streams and focusing on, on like new projects like Pupsburg and trying to make those happen. I need to chill the fuck out. I have two little businesses that I'm trying to build right now. One is ESPGH. This is ESPGH, right? Um... ESPGH, if it will load, oh, it keeps doing this. Why does it keep doing this? No, now it doesn't do it. What the freaking heck? Oh, there's something wrong there. I gotta, There's something that I have to fix with the website. Um, but this is ESPGH. Um, I'm essentially done with the product. It is literally just a, a platform for internships in Pittsburgh. Right? I can click here at AutoSorts. There's two market research opportunities. There are two photo and video opportunities. There are two social media opportunities. There are two business biz dev opportunities. There's a bunch of different little things that I can just scroll through and add. Um, it, it's all fully automated. I don't have to touch shit. Like it's it's a Google form. You, I send a Google form to local startups, um, and and literally they they go and and pop something into a little Google form that I design in 20 goddamn minutes, and it auto populates on this website and it's auto searchable. Right? I click here. I can go to the company website. It, it automatically sends me to the the information. All the information here is necessary. It says 1.5 hours per week. It's unpaid. It's a business opportunity. Here are the requirements. There is no defined start and end date, and you can email this guy to inquire it's all here it's super simple it is a fully automated completed um freaking uh, internship platform for pittsburgh startups great right cool took me very little time to build um i want to try to monetize that to make it into like a little bit of a money per month right because if, if it's completely automated i don't really have to do anything and it's automatically kind of put into the workflows that i already work with if I could automate that and make even a little bit of money off of that, that's just raw profit, dude. Like, that is passive gosh dang income. Um, so I am probably going to start chart. I'm going to, so the first goal is to popularize this among students, right? If I can get tons and tons and tons and tons of students on this, then I can start charging other people for access to it, for, to put something into the Google form. Um, and I, it's funny because I, I said, read more about what to be aware of, start of internships. And it forwards my, <laughs> to my blog, <laughs> um, where you can read all about, uh, why startup internships are scary and what you need to be careful of for different kind of sections and sectors. Uh, but it, like everything works, everything's great. Uh, it didn't take me that long. I'm probably going to try to build different little things. If I can create like a, a corporate version of this, so for like corporate internships in town and I can get corporates to pay for it, ooh, um, that would be nice because they can definitely dish out a lot more money than startups can. But we'll see. We'll totally see. Right now this works fine. Uh, I'm, uh, but the goal, like this is one of my little businesses that I'm trying to run, right? This is what I'm trying to build, right? 
um, I need to get this monetized before I do any other projects, before I build anything else, before I do any other big fancy things on Entrepreneur where I try to try and fail and try and fail and try and succeed on, on some new little mini startup idea. I need to focus, right? I need to get my freaking head down and I need to finish something first. I need to finish it to the point where I'm making a little bit of money off of it and then you move on. I had a lot, a lot of trouble with this when I was like junior year of college, right? Because end, uh, like, uh, End of junior year of college. Because end of junior year, I was just networking. I was talking and talking and talking and talking to tons and tons of actual startup entrepreneurs in Pittsburgh. That's how I built my whole network here. Um, I was interviewing them. I was saying, hey, I don't know what the shit I'm doing. And I would love it if you could help me. Because I am confused and scared and alone. <laughs> in terms of like what the hell my career is going to be. Right, and that's how I learned everything about entrepreneurship. That's how I learned everything that I know today about entrepreneurship. And then, and then that, and then just fiddling around with stuff. Right awesomeness but uh like i was trying because i was talking to all these different people and because everybody was alerting me to all these cool opportunities i was trying to do literally five things at once five different little mini companies five different little initiatives five different little websites five whatever right i was trying to build five different things at once and i got nothing done nothing like i i fiddled and i learned a ton I learned a ton. Messing around with a lot of different little things. Make it, you, you absorb a ton of information. You learn how everything works. But you don't get anything done. And I'm, I'm being really, really careful to not do the same thing with Entrepreneur. Because I'm falling into the same trap, right? I'm, I'm putting pressure on myself every week to build something new. I don't need to do that. What I need to do is I need to get something going, finish it. Get something going, finish it. Automate it. Get something going, automate it. Like I need I need to... I need something to end before I start something new, right? Because I, I, you can't have 10 billion things going on at once. You can, but it's not going to be good, and you're not going to get anything done. You're going to be really unproductive. So that's what I'm struggling with right now. That's what I'm trying to, to work with. Um, yeah, so I'm probably going to, like, the uh, point of this is Pupsburg, what I was just trying to build, on the back burner. I'll do that later. Me and Dan are going to work on that in the future. Right now, I need to finish the SPGH. I need to get paid for this. Um, I need to finish 412 Thrift, my little thrift kind of uh, platform in Pittsburgh, and I need to finish it. I need to get it moving so it is making me actual money because I have like seven months left, six, seven months um, before I am on my own, sustaining myself. My, my family is helping me a good bit to, to help me like experiment with all these different things and get myself um, kind of up and running. Super fortunate little situation. I need to take full advantage of that, and I need to work my little butt off to like get shit moving, right? To 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 automate my life, to to get things working, so I have actual business, or I have a job, or I have enough freelance, or I have whatever going on, right? By the time that shit is done, um, I messed around for the th first three months, just kind of experimenting. Now we've been doing it for like two, three months, where I'm like hardcore in it. And the next six months are going to be me trying to freaking monetize. That is the goal. I need to stop focusing on, on building my audience. I need to stop focusing on, on building my freaking website or anything like that. I need to focus on building SPGH and building 412 Thrift. Because if I don't finish those, I'm not going to start something else, right? That's the plan. So, bit of a rant. Very personal rant. But a good rant nonetheless. Um, so that's what's going on. I got to focus. I will focus. And I am focusing right now. The, the next like two weeks are just going to be me. I have a big fat list of all the people that I need to contact for 412 Thrift and for uh, YesPGH. And so we're going to see if I can get paid for those. And if I can't, scrap them or sell, give them to somebody else because um, I ain't working on nothing. They ain't going to get me paid because I need to get paid because I'm not in college anymore. You can afford to do things that you don't get paid for in college, but you can't afford to do them when you are a real functioning human. And I am currently, in theory, a real functioning human. So, that's what's going on with me. That's how my life is going. That's what the world is. It'd be like that, right? I don't really have anything else to say. I'm chilling. This is a this is a nice little low attended stream today. I had like maybe like like ten people chilling. This is a nice little group. Very happy. Sometimes I'll get up to like thirty and I get a little bit I feel a little bit too much pressure to to, to, to talk and I talk even quicker than I usually do, which is already a bit too fast. Um, but yeah. Things are good. Things are good, people. I appreciate y'all hopping on. Whoever y'all are. 
we had a lot of people on, on Twitch today, I think because I did the, the calendar invite thing. Um, and it's also way better than fucking LinkedIn. <laughs> LinkedIn sucks, guys. Ah, uh, quick bitch, bitch rant about LinkedIn. I freaking, ugh, I scroll through my feed every day and I block people so aggressively. I unfollow people so aggressively because I don't like their content, right? I hate some people's content. It's boring. It's it's a meme. It's it, like, it's, or uh, not memes. I never see memes on LinkedIn, which is why I'm going to put memes on LinkedIn. Um, it, it's not, it, it doesn't pertain to me, right? If something doesn't pertain to me and it doesn't matter, I don't care. You shouldn't care. It's a waste of my time. LinkedIn is a place where I'm trying to... Uh, what are you going to do when you max out your block limit? No, so I'm not blocking people. I'm just unfollowing people. I haven't blocked anybody yet. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Hank does the same thing. He, he unfollows blocks and reports every ad is annoying. Good, 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 good. Um, we should all be using social media like that, period. I do that on Instagram. I do that on Facebook. If I don't care... What's going on? I'm not just going to leave it on my freaking profile, right? I'm super messy tonight, Kenneth. I'm going all over the place. Um, this is what happens when I don't have a, a more specified agenda. I just go a little bit ridiculous, which is I need to have more shit to work on. Um, uh, <sighs> no, I do. Yeah, I just unfollow people. Um, if you unfollow people, you don't get their, your, you don't get their stuff in your feed, right? Um, I aggressively unfollow people on Instagram, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. If you don't, and you should do the same thing, really, truly and really. Like, instead of, instead of like, uh, I, I know a lot of people complain aggressively or, or, or rant on people's comments about, like, this doesn't belong on, oh, I'm very bitchy tonight, Kenneth. I'm always bitchy. Um, Saturday nights is when I'm, I get really, really <laughs> angry. Um, uh, if you see something that you don't like on a, a social platform, just freaking like unfollow them block them whatever don't complain it's not going to help them you're just you're also just giving them more like you're sharing it to your audience you're helping them by commenting on their stuff like <laughs> um just don't go and and unfollow them go and block them go and 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 delete their account delete their connection whatever it is or or unfollow the people that are sharing their thing don't complain. Just just use social media as a tool and understand that like you can control what you see in your feed for Instagram and Facebook. Now, <laughs> really, <gasps> it's eighty percent commenting on my posts. Oh my god, it's so wholesome. Oh my god, Jess, my heart just swelled up. That means so much. I'm so glad. I don't LinkedIn much either. No, that's a lie. Um, ah, that's so sweet of you. I appreciate that very very wholesomely. Look at this. This is, a, this is a big love fest now. Um, <laughs> genuinely, I appreciate that. That's really cool. I'm glad that I'm I'm I I am worth your time. It's genuinely, like I, I try really hard with the content. Let me know seriously. Like you you are more critical than most of like my other kind of commenters. Like if I'm posting some shit, you'll be like, "This is shit." Like you you call it out. So please, if I post stuff that that you don't like, yell at me. If you if you have, if I put like yell at me because I uh, or unfollow me. Like if I if I post stuff that you generally don't care about, unfollow me. Like again, same same thing, right? If I can improve, message me personally and be like, "Yo, your this is this diff deviates from your usual content because I'd like to see this and you like to do this and this is why I'm following you. I would like to see more of this." I love that kind of feedback, right? That's good feedback. That is good feedback. If you can do that and you appreciate a creator and you can comment that kind of stuff, that is good feedback. But saying this is shit is not good feedback, right? Um, maybe one should be discerning when to choose, when choosing whom to follow. Yes, I agree, but, um, <laughs> no, it's good, dude. I appreciate the devil's advocate for everything. I, I deeply appreciate it, Jess. It's awesome. I, I, I love it when you, when you comment on my stuff. Um, and my mom says maybe I should be more careful with whom to follow. So, <laughs> so my mom's roasting me. Uh, um, she's right. She's absolutely right. Uh, the problem is when I like I connect with people that I think are going to be interested in my content. I get like five connection requests per day on average, right? And I connect with probably like two, three of those per day, probably about half, uh, because it looks like they're connecting with me because they like my content, which is good. And I want more people to like my content. I want people to care, and I want more following. Like, yeah, I, I want to build a following around this kind of thing. This is exciting stuff, and I want people to be able to participate. And the more the people there are, the more people will participate, and the more fun we can have. Uh, right? 
But um, it turns out sometimes, so don't roast me so hard, mom, um, <laughs> is uh, uh, I follow people or I end up connecting with people that don't have like very interesting accounts or very interesting things to say. And so they'll share stuff that does not relate to anything that I care about. And so I have to go back and unfollow them. The problem is, for me specifically, and probably a lot of other LinkedIn creators, it becomes so hard for me to find people that actually, like, like people that I care about on my goddamn freaking newsfeed. Like, everybody, uh, oh, let me show you, let me show you, let me show you, let me show you. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, ooh, I have beef, dude. This, I'm, I'm such beef about LinkedIn right now. I'm so pissed. Like, look, okay, so look, this guy's great. I like Jenny Do. He posts really cool things. Great guy. But the reason that they showed this post, right? The reason that they showed this post is because this guy commented on it. This guy comments on everything. Great guy. Very, very cool guy. Um, <laughs> Kenneth, don't support her. Um, but uh, like the reason that it showed me this post in my gosh dang feed is because one of my friends commented, right? I scroll down. The reason this is shown is because like, okay, well, this is promoted. That's different. This is one post that is independent, right? This is one post independent. This is a live post from somebody that I love, Patrick Ward, that is independent. This was posted because Greg commented on this. Scroll down. This, um, this is, it's giving me bad examples. It was just doing this to me earlier today. Um, it's like at least 50% of the, it's a, <laughs> shut up, Erica. God damn it. Um, I get roasted so much. It's I, oh, I. I was having a discussion with. I was at IHOP last night at like two a.m. <laughs> um, with 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 my girlfriend, my friend Steve, and my friend Andy, and we were all. And my girlfriend's name is Nicole. Uh, we were all just kind of chilling, eating fucking pancakes, and and I ordered a bunch of hash browns. It was good, but I like went off on a rant because I am like roastable, right? Like, I, I'm pretty roastable. I don't know why. I just accept it. Yeah, so Kenneth, Kenneth has, doesn't even know me. Look at this. Kenneth doesn't even know me. And he's like, oh, of course, absolutely, I see. He's too easy. Kenneth doesn't even know me, and he said I'm too easy to roast. What does that mean? Why is that? What elements of my human being are roastable? I don't understand fully, but I know it's true. Because, I like, the first time that I met... Uh, Nicole's one of Nicole's best friends, Eileen. I was talking about Eileen before because we discovered, like, created the dog idea, right? The the Pupsburg. Um, before, like, I just met her, and the first time that I met her, she was a little shy, like, "Oh, hi, nice to meet you, yay!" Second time that I met her, she started roasting me, and in every friend group that she's ever been in, she's Eileen has always been the one that she's roasted, right? Um, she's always been the one that everybody like likes to tease or, or, or makes fun of, right? Like there, there's always the, that person in the friend group that everybody makes fun of. She, the the roastable person in every friend group she's ever been in, started making fun of me because I am just on another level of ridiculousness, right? <laughs> like, oh, I don't understand it. I don't understand. Um, <laughs> dude, that would be great. Okay, so Toast says that I should have a 20-minute stream each week where people just roast me because I'm incredibly roastable. That's a different brand from what I'm trying. I'm trying to, honestly, I'm trying to cultivate some level of expertise when it comes to building no-code tools and entrepreneurship in general. I'm trying to, to put off a bit of a persona that I know what I'm kind of doing, but it's kind of hard <laughs> when people just, ugh, people just roast the hell out of me. It's become a very personal stream. I pre I'm glad this was a small one. I'm glad not many people joined this one. Yeah, we still only have about 10 people. Um, and we got five people, four or five people, um, over on, over on Twitch, which is dope. But, um, gosh dang, my dudes. <laughs> Look at people are hanging out in, in the, in the chat. Roastable nerd. Roastable nerd. <sighs> that should be in my LinkedIn bio. Roastable. Anyway, I got nothing else to say. That was a great rant. I feel really good. I feel like energized. Ugh, maybe <laughs> I was like, maybe you can monetize that. Getting fucking ripped apart on social media. Ugh, one dollar an insult. <laughs> that would be so funny. Oh my god, pay a dollar per roast would do. Yeah, would do. Oh my god, that's funny. That's real funny, man. 
Ugh. Shit's good. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. Ah. Whole heck and a lot of fun. Alright, everybody. I got nothing else to say. I'm probably gonna freaking uh, make a bunch of ramen like I do every single time I do these streams. I reward myself with a big bunch of ramen because my throat is sore and my tummy is empty and my soul is a gaping void. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm gonna chill out. Uh, what kind of ramen? You don't want to know. I do some weird shit to ramen. Um, <laughs> thank you, dude. I appreciate that. Um, I've been told I cackle. I've been told I have a very defined laugh, and it is a cackle. You do want to know? Ugh. So, uh, please don't judge me for this. This is where you can roast me. Everybody I know roasts me for this. I make ramen in a very special way. My favorite kind of ramen dish that I love right now is I take, uh... Cream of mushroom soup, like two cans of cream of mushroom soup, and I make I, I boil it and I like get it moving and I heat it up and everything like that, and then I put the ramen packet like I not the ramen packets I leave the seasoning out, but I put the ramen like blocks in the soup and I cook it in the soup. It actually works really well. Mushroom soup is the reason that it's a little gross, right? I love it. It's delicious. You should try it. Like two people have agreed with me on this that it sounds good. It is delicious. I love it so much, but. Like, cooking ramen in soup is actually a really nice idea. I do it with, like, turkey broth. I do it with vegetable broth. It's actually really good. I highly would recommend. W would recommend. Um, like, if you cook it in soup, it, like, absorbs the, 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 the flavors of, of the broth or of the soup. Um, that's some ramen -less, ramen ramenlicious shit. Yeah, dude, absolutely, dude. Absolutely, fucking hell yeah. Um, but, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. And that's literally every single time that I do a stream, that's what I do. Um, so for the cream, of yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just soup. You, you put, I mean, you should put it in soup regardless. You can, you can do so much cool stuff with ramen, dude. I'm probably, <laughs> I have a little book, 101 things to do with ramen. Half of it is garbage, but like some of it's good. That's where I got the cream of mushroom soup from. It's quality stuff. It's quality stuff. Ramen is delicious. Cheap too. Ah, living that ramen life. That startup life. Ah, no. Fuck the startup life. All right, cool. I got nothing else to say. We actually managed to... I read that. Oh, yeah. You read that when you were in school. That's dope. It's a great book. Um, Angel Hair is delicious, dude. Ugh. I have some I have some in the freaking fridge right now. It's so good. I'll probably eat it tomorrow. Oof. <sighs> but, yeah. Stuff is good. Stuff is going great. Very happy with everything. My life is good. I'm a little bit stressed. I do need to work my, my little tiny freaking butt off on the SPGH and 412 thrift. But once I get things moving there, um, Goodwill sounded interested, actually. So I was talking to Goodwill. I found the marketing manager for Goodwill in the local area. And I was bugging him. Um, and he scheduled something like two weeks out um, for a call, which is really annoying. Shut up. Shut up, Mom. It's delicious. Uh, but uh, it's... Uh, so I'm talking with Goodwill. And if I can get Goodwill on my platform, it works. Like, the platform is done. <laughs> the rest is just growth. So that would be great. Ugh. There's like six Goodwills in Pittsburgh. So that's like three weeks off, though. And in the meantime, I'm going to try to grab a ton of other little niche groups. I'm going to try to grab uh, um, Red, Red, and Blue. I'm going to try to grab Salvation Army. I'm going to try to grab a bunch of different groups uh, to see. <laughs> Thank you, Kenneth. I really appreciate all the support. You're super awesome. Um, but yeah, I'm done. We actually managed to fill up all the time with me just bitching about random shit. Um, ah, but yeah, I hope y'all have a wonderful night. I appreciate y'all hopping on. You're super cool. You're all super cute. You're all super great. Um, and I'll see you next week. We're probably going to build the LinkedIn memes page, which I think will be really fun. Oh, You're the best too, Olga. I appreciate you hopping all my stuff and, and supporting me so deeply. She sent me, Olga sent me a playlist right before, mm, uh, right before the stream to help me hype myself up. I like the music. A bit old school for my taste. A bit wholesome, a bit, a bit relaxing. I instead listened to uh, remotely edgy heavy metal and EDM on full blast with these headphones. And it, that hypes me up. It's good too. You should try that. But that's just my vibe. Nobody agrees that I'm edgy. I think I'm edgy. A little bit. Apache? Ooh, I'll check it out. Um, but alright, cool. 
Love you all. You're all super great. I'll see you later. Have a wonderful, 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 wonderful night. We're going to make memes next week. It'll be a lot of fun. I'll see you then. Bye.